Hello, you corny soldier. And welcome back to hell. Today, uh, well, this evening, I want to talk about something that um, is pretty, pretty important to me. Um, now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the news, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. So I'm going to talk about the news first. And in the news, um, Hezbollah uh, are basically blowing themselves up because they're using a really, 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 really old tech, namely pages. Um, pages aren't really a thing anymore. Uh, well, they are if you're a terrorist organization or, or something like that. But personally, I don't have a pager. I've not ever... I had a page set to like I had one pager when I worked as a courier and that was usually just you know come in package here get it get it get it you know it, that's all it was I when I quit that job I gave them back their pager and I was like done you know never touched them ever again why mobile phones are a thing okay literally phones are a thing no point now some of you may or may not know I do cyber security is, is my, my, my day job I'm, I'm a remote pen tester so I basically sit here matrix style things on the screen you know it's not really it but anyway you get the point and so a lot of my friends who are not so tech savvy ask me is it possible to cause a mobile device's battery to explode and the short answer is yes. The long answer is yes. Uh, how is it possibly done? It depends on the make, the model, and the firmware. It, 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 it all depends on those three things. Reason being is when manufacturers make pages, mobile phones, tablets, laptops, you name it, they only use what they have on hand or in stock. So, you may be buying a crapple phone that may have Samsung parts in it. You just don't know because they may have some leftover batteries from uh, the newest S whatever run of, of, of phones. You know, they may have batteries left over from this that will fit in this. Even though... Yeah, ladies, white is bigger than black. Point is... The batteries could be identical. The connectors could be identical. The battery controllers may not. Now, what I mean by that is all circuits, including things like this little battery backup that's hooked to my little Raspberry Pi, okay, all of them have a charging regulator and a discharging regulator, and they're all run by firmware. Firmware that when the chip is first print, cut and printed and, and, and made into an actual chip that can be EPROM'd once, cooked once and that's it, you know, cooked it, soldered it, boards made, one hung low china, put it in there, da -da -da, there you go, wish.com, okay? Problem with that is if a hacker like myself gets their grubby little mitts on one, there's nothing stopping me from reverse engineering it, including the code. I can then take a look at that code using Ada, using Ollie, using so many different tools to look at the code and realize, oh wait, if I just move this prong over here, it will just rapidly discharge the battery or rapidly charge the battery or cause it to bypass fuses and lockouts and various other things and cause the battery to basically just boom, done turning the device into a pseudo IED. Now there's not enough explosive mass in order to become a lethal IED unless they purposely put it on their neck. Yet yeah, granted, yeah, it's exploding by their groin and they're blowing their bollocks off. Sucks to be them. Sorry, not sorry. At the same time, are phones from the West like these, and yes, I have quite a lot of phones. I think we've got phones over there. I have three phones right here, okay? Are these phones okay? Yes, they are. As long as you update them. 
keep your phones up to date. If there's no updates for your phone because your phone's too obsolete, I, I don't know what I don't know what to say to you. But where I work in tech, I'm constantly updating my phones. Yes, some of these phones are older. This phone is nine years old, but it's hacked. This does not use regular Android. This uses a custom Android firmware, a custom Android ROM. So I get all the newest up-to-date apps and security features and whatnot in an older obsolete phone. Yes, it's not as fast as this. It doesn't have the wireless charging as this. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles and features that this phone has, but there's nothing stopping me from buying an older phone and just dragging it into the future because that's exactly what I did with this. It's exactly what I did with this. Now, this is a much older Android phone. This is my first Android phone that was on contract. And it's paid off. It's mine. Technically, it is much newer than this. Okay, this is much newer than this. This doesn't even have an SD card slot, so I can't even upgrade the internal memory. So once this memory is full, the, the, full it's full. But I keep this around on the off chance that this phone dies or, and by the way, this one's on a separate carrier and I use it as an emergency two-factor two authentication for this phone. So someone tries to SIM clone this phone and tries to use certain apps and they're trying to use to get the authenticator, this phone gets the authenticator, not this phone. So good luck. And this phone, I haven't registered it with any websites or anything. So good luck. And in fact, it's not even turned on right now. So good luck. But my point is, yes, it is possible. You can hack any device that has an integrated circuit. Hacking doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, joining the matrix kind of thing. Hacking can be as simple as taking a paperclip. And here you go. Here's a prime example of reverse engineering. Okay. This is a tablet. This is a tablet processor, a touchscreen tablet processor. The screen is over there. The battery pack is over there. I disassembled this. I got this for like 10 pounds on Facebook Marketplace. I disassembled it because I wanted a touchscreen because I'm designing a new, um, it doesn't matter. I'm designing something new, but I needed a touchscreen that I knew I could get my hands on readily. Got it, tore it apart. And then I realized there are some useful components on here, namely the charging regulator, the main processor, secondary pro coprocessor. You know, there, there's so many things on here that I could use with my digital microscope, which is right here. It's missing the mount, but this is my digital microscope right here, right here, looking around, finding things that I need, touch, 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 boom, done, I've hacked it. I can now pull the ROM, reverse engineer the ROM, throw it through Ollie, throw it through Ada, throw it through wherever I need to. And then before you know it, I've hacked the ROM on this thing. And now I post it up on certain forums, certain websites. And now everyone and anyone can freely root their devices. That's how root kits are first originally designed. They, someone buys it. They buy the phone. They buy the hardware. And they hack it. Now, how did they blow up all of them at once? It's kind of pointless. Only blowing one up and thinking, oh, it was... No, it was an accident. So you time your attack and you time it right to get them all to go at the same time. And there's a reason why. Because then they can pinpoint what areas are clustered with the enemy combatants. And I'm, that's what I'm going to call them. I'm calling them enemy combatants. We did it in the British Army. You always take a little tracker, you put it on a little rat, and you wait for that rat to scurry right back to the nest. And oh look, that's where they're at. Call it in the house, it's tung, 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 pfft, flat. The cops do it all the time in movies. They grab one guy that they know that he's not going to squeal, but it doesn't matter. They still keep him there for the 24, 48 hours and pretend like he's squealed. So when he goes running back to the boss and the boss grabs him and starts saying, ah, why'd you squeal? Why'd you squeal? Yada, yada. That's when the police rush in and say, oh, look, you're intimidating a witness in a court case. And then they're all done for Rico. Why? Even though the guy didn't squeal, he was still their Trojan horse. 
That's the whole point. Do I condone what they did? No. I don't condone using any t- kind of device to hurt another human being. I don't. Used to be a soldier. Not a soldier anymore. Okay? I take what I learned through my cybersecurity and I apply it to defend other people from nasty people that use cybersecurity. Okay? Case in point. This is another thing I wanted to talk about. Now that's the tech side. Let's talk about my, my, my other side. This is my NCFE Cash Level 3 Awards Cybersecurity Practices uh, uh, course that I was doing. I got offered to do the course. I took it and I just recently completed it tonight. Full on 100%. A month and a half, I might add, ahead of the entire class. And even my tutor was like, hell. Now, why is my tutor literally screaming F in hell? He's screaming F in hell because I have already gone ahead and pretty much done it. I did it doing something like this. Now, this is Allison. And as you can see, Allison is a free online web source. There'll be a link in the video description. You can check it out. It's free. Yes, they do run They do run ads. Is what it is. But right here, Diploma in Cybersecurity, CompTIA Cloud Basics Plus, CompTIA Part 1, Part 2, Machine Learning. I, I, I've completed some basic courses. These are two to three hour courses. You can do these. And these are cert- these are part of the University of Phoenix. These are guaranteed diplomas, and I've got these skills. These are my skills. They're in my CV, along with my course certification. Once my my tutor goes over the last of my paperwork, even though it says overall progress is seventeen, I'm done. I'm done with it all. <laughs> I don't know why it's saying I'm not, but I'm done. So it's all all submitted. I'm just waiting on him to go through and go tick 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 tick. So, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. But, you got to understand, guys. I do these sort of retraining courses. That's exactly what they are. They're retraining courses. I do them because you've got to keep your cybersecurity practices up to date. You can't rely on old data. If you're relying on old data, you're doing it wrong. So, don't rely on old data constantly check your data constantly check your sources constantly go over your tools and your apps and various other things okay and constantly push yourself i'm currently doing a 14 day uh chat gpt uh python coding course and most people are like what do you mean there's nothing stopping you from going to chat gpt okay there's nothing stopping you from going to chat gpt and just typing in I would like to start a 14-day Python training course with your help. And then all of a sudden, there you go. It will teach you what you need to do. Basics, control flow, functions, data structures, right here, file handling. Error handling and exceptions. Introduction to libraries. Does it work for me? Yes. That sounds perfect. However, I have learning problems, which I do, and I've discussed this. So, can we do it as if I am a younger person. I'm basically letting you know that I do have learning difficulties, which I do. See, right here. There you go. And it's broken it down to even more simpler things. See, what is Python? How can you install Python? Various other things. So, are you starting to understand how you can do this? You can do this, guys. ChatGPT is a free resource. Just have a Google account, which is a free resource. Allison.com, a free website to join. You can even connect it to your Google and log right in through your Google. You don't pay anything for Allison until you get to the end and you pay for your diplomas. You pay for them to ship, print and ship your diploma. 
that's it. Yeah, granted, you get to see an ad once in a while. I'm sorry, I would rather take an advertisement once in a blue moon and pay for my certificates than pay a, a, a university or a college or some online Instagram ad. 800, 900, 1200 pounds for a course where they just rip the info from websites like Allison. And you know you do. You, you know, you know, and this thing, they know you do because they will purposely try to bleep out the watermarks of these free rep website resources like Allison. Now, granted, there is affiliate links with Allison. I don't have an affiliate link with Allison. They've offered me one. This is the thing. They've offered me one because I've literally recommended Allison to uh, maybe 50 to 100 of my friends. I've literally turned around and said to them, Allison, 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 as if Allison's my girlfriend. To the point where people are like, what is it? And so I show it to them. You can, you can do it on your phone. Allison have an app that you can learn, still learn your courses on your phone. So while you're at work, instead of doom scrolling on Twitch and on, on Instagram and TikTok and, and all these other stupid sites, you can go to Allison and you can learn something during your lunch break while you're working that mundane job. So while you're working that mind numbing one job that pays for your bills and you've got your passion and your side project that one day you hope is going to replace that job as your form of income and when it does fucking great you've got a head start and that's how you get the head start you get it with Allison again this is not paid promotion Allison doesn't pay me to do this at all they've offered me an affiliate link I haven't taken it yet I might take them up on it though but like I said Allison is one of the best resources I can suggest for anyone because the diplomas are recognized in both the UK and the US and pretty much around the world okay they're a damn good resource so I'm saying to you, it is a resource. Use it. Okay? Use it. ChatGBT is a resource. Use it. Don't use it for your answers. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you can use ChatGPT if you're stuck. And only if you're stuck motivating yourself. Things of that nature. I suffer from, from ADHD and ADD. Okay? Trust me. I have learning difficulties. I can pick up a coding code, how to code something like that, but retaining the knowledge, keeping it in my brain, not possible. This is why I have audiobooks because I can, I have read, I, I, no joke, my favorite poem is The Nevermore Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. I know that poem word for word, word for word. But there are days when I can't remember a bloody line of it, and there are days I can quote it repeatedly, non stop. Because that's how my brain works. Same with coding. One day I know the ins and outs of, of Python or Rust or C++. And then there are days when I can just barely remember how to import anything with Python. Because of my ADHD and my ADD. And various other undiagnosed mental health issues. That I'm still in the process of getting them diagnosed. But I don't let it slow me down. Yes, they are things that are sandbagging me. They are tr purposely trying to slow me down. My brain is purposely trying to tell me, slow the fuck down. But mm, I've got things and people counting on me. I can't. I can't slow down. I've got a fiancé. I've got children. I've got stuff waiting on me. I can't slow down. And nor should you. So please understand that when you are stuck in a rut and you can't figure out a way out stop for a minute think sit down say the question out loud in your head because believe it or not if you just say it in your head you don't you can't answer it but if you say it verbally if you literally put words to power and you say your problem out loud the cat is stuck in the tree. How do I get the cat down? You can use a ladder. You can try and entice the cat down. You call the fire brigade. Do you see what I'm saying? You're already coming up with answers to that problem. If you just give the problem a voice. Say it out loud. That is the one thing I've learned through everything in life. If you just 
say the problem out loud or even write the problem down. This is why I've got tons of freaking, I'm joking, look, I've got freaking pens and, and, and writing pads everywhere because I'm constantly writing stuff down. And when you write it down and you read it and you say it out loud, you give that, you make that problem tangible. It gives your brain something, you take it out from here and you put it here and that means you can start doing Tony Stark freaking Iron Man shit to it. That's how you tackle problems. Anyway guys, hope you found this video insightful. If you did, please give the video a like. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Until then, keep your chest playing. Keep your enemies dying. Cobra Commander is out and I'll see you guys in the next video.